certainly excited to do that. Alright, we are on 63 in Arkansas. Really freaking heavy. Uh, 44,000 pounds. So it grossed out at about 77,000 pounds before I put fuel in and I put 100 gallons in. So almost 78,000 pounds. At least I think. I think fuel is one gallon equals seven pounds or something like that. Uh, like I said, I like this road. It's pretty. So. Uh, take a quick video of it. Uh, one thing you're going to hear today, I usually keep the radio off, but I'm listening to some talk show. It's got MJ on it, if you're familiar. Uh, I, I'm from Florida, so he used to be a big morning show down there. And, I mean, I didn't much care for him, but since Lex and Terry's over, I'm listening to him. And he's got some valid points, so... Uh, You'll probably hear that in the background for a little bit. Other than that, I'm going to shut up and drive. Tell you about it right now on Schnitt, hour three, the Let's Do It. This is the Schnitt Show. 1945. August 14th, 1945, the end of World War II. That iconic photo of this U.S. Navy sailor kissing the woman in the white nurse's uniform right in the middle of Broadway, right in Times Square. There is a, a fairly well-known blogger who goes by the name Leopard, who is now stirring up trouble. And all these years later, guess what? Calling that a sexual assault. <laughs> it's a sexual assault now. Trying to taint and spoil that image which worldwide, and certainly here in America, has come to uh, denote the, the, the celebration, the jubilance, the happiness, the end of World War II. It's funny you should mention that too, because as I said, where I'm from in Florida, they have a place called Marina Jacks. And at Marina Jacks, they have a huge statue, it's probably 20, 30 feet tall, of said picture, the Navy sailor kissing the nurse, so that's funny because it has some relevance to my life. Then a romantic moment or sex assault, feminist blogger slams the kissing sailor from the 1945 Times Square photo as a drunken predator. <laughs> the sailor was a drunken predator, a drunken sailor, and a sexual predator, and it was a sexual assault. Give me a break. If you want to check into this, we'll put the story up on I mean, a <laughs> bozo. Uh, listen, that's uh, freedom of speech. You know, you have a computer, you have a keyboard, and listen, you have a, a pen and paper. You can make all kinds of wild and crazy assertions, as long as legally you don't cross certain lines. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Welcome back to Schnitt. Well, phones are loaded here. Uh, uh, tell Sue I'm going to grab calls in just a matter of moments. I want to lay a couple of things out here, including this gun story, which is really unbelievable. And if you're a gun owner, and it's really bogus. It's really just, it's a stupid premise and a stupid idea because the the whole premise of this action that I'm going to tell you about in a moment is easily defeatable. It's, it's ridiculous. Get to that in a second. Oh, and also, don't let me forget the Susan G. Komen Foundation. You know, the folks that raise money for breast cancer research. Susan G. Coleman is turning down a whole bunch of money. Susan G. Coleman is turning down a whole bunch of donation cash to its organization, to its operation, to its foundation. Why? Why would they turn down money coming in for breast cancer research? I'll give you a hint. I'll give you one word hint, then we'll get into the details of the story. Porn. Porn. Who cares where they get the money from? Porn. Porno. Hey, they give me my porno music when I do the story coming up in just a bit. Alright? Alright, on to the 
the story which uh, ought to infuriate. And then after the infuriation has settled down, simmered down now just a little bit, uh, then start letting your head spin on, okay, we got a couple of states talking about this potentially. Could this spread to the federal government? Uh, where does this begin to infringe? This is a lot of money for really little payout. Let me lay, let me lay this out for you quickly here. It has to do with something called micro stamping. Micro stamping. And we're having some some noise coming out of New York and Connecticut. And the question is How far will New York and Connecticut go to rid themselves of guns, but as a byproduct of that, will they rid themselves of very high-profile manufacturers of guns and jettison thousands of jobs elsewhere? In New York, you have a big Remington facility. It's up in uh, New York State. It's, uh, it's, it's Ilium, New York. Billy in New York is, uh, I want to say it's, it's uh, is it between Syracuse and, and Utica, if I'm not mistaken? I'm trying to remember. Anyway, Remington has a pretty big plant. And then you have Colt. And Colt operates, big operation in Connecticut. And these are huge, iconic American gun manufacturers, Remington and Colt. And in both these states, in New York and in Connecticut, you've got the legislatures there considering mandatory implementation of something called micro-stamping, micro-stamping technology. And what micro-stamping is, it, it, it's micro-stamping or it can be called ballistic imprinting. And it's a process that uses little bitty, tiny, little inchy, winchy lasers to engrave tiny marks on the firing pin of the gun so that it will leave a little bitty imprint on the bullet case, on, on the, the firing pin, you know, on, the, 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 uh, on, on the bullet, which you know, sets off the primer and, and, and fires the bullet. And what they're thinking is that those bullets uh, which are ejected at the scene, in some cases, and this is where the flaws start to really unravel, that uh, cops can then look at the bullets, use special technology to read the micro, and we're talking about, you know, a firing pin on a weapon. I mean, it's it's tiny. It's uh, depending on the nail size, but it's you know it's the, like a tip of a nail. And of course, nail size is very, but it's a, a small like you know piece of hardware. Tiny, I mean, the firing pin is small. And let me interject. That's why we always pick up our shell casings. And then and, and, and other, a, a manufacturer, the gun serial number, and then the police can trace if they find bullet casings. They'd be able to, I mean, we're talking minuscule, tiny, little engravings that would be, you know, struck into the, the bullet after it was fired and ejected at the scene. But there are all kinds of problems with this. Well, first of all, uh, you know, you got to assume, first of all, that a spent cartridge is going to remain at the scene. A lot of folks will pick up their spent cartridges, and that only is a semi-automatic. What about a revolver? Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. A, a revolver, the casing stay inside the weapon. And then, wait a minute, and then wait, 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 we've got over 300 million guns in this country already. What about all those 300 million guns that have no micro etchings, no micro imprinting on the firing pit? I, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Just, uh, let me rein in. Hang on. Let me just go back just a little bit. The expense of the micro imprinting would be absolutely crippling <laughs> to gun manufacturers and would raise prices but you know that's what you know a lot of these states would want are they willing to screw with their economies and send some of these businesses classic firearms companies like colt and remington send them to other states it's extremely expensive and it's been said that this could be the final straw for Remington's factory in uh, Ilion, New York, up in New York State. Colt, Colt's headquartered in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, and they could, they could, they could say we're out of here also. So back in March, Stephen Jackson, he was the big dude. 
He's the top gun, <laughs> no pun intended, at Remington. He wrote to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, warning that if they force micro -stamp, uh, stamping on the firing pins of their guns, it would force the company, this is a quote, to reconsider its commitment to the New York market altogether rather than spend this astronomical amount of money necessary to reconfigure its manufacturing process and install and purchase this micro-stamping equipment. The mayor of Illion, New York, and this is where uh, one of the factories sits, says Remington is a bluffing that several Midwest states with less restrictive gun laws, they want them. They want them badly. And probably give all kinds of tax breaks and concessions and who knows to get them to move over. And the mayor says that the micro-stamping would be just as bad as, uh, you know, other horrible legislation that, that doesn't do much. Some of the other things that we've seen with, uh, you know, gun legislation. And he says that it, it would just be awful. The mayor of this small New York town that employs a whole lot of people says a criminal is going to obtain a weapon if they want to obtain a weapon. This is a downstate ploy. It's downstate politics. What is it? It's liberal New York City. That, that's exactly what he's saying. Downstate, liberal New York City. Uh, lib more liberal Albany is, is what he's talking about. And same deal in Connecticut. You have executives at cult. They've said for years... Uh, that uh, the feel-good legislation would force the company to move out of state. And this is just another example of what happens when government creates a hostile environment for business. Business will pick up, flip you the middle finger, and move somewhere else. <laughs> and yeah, that, that, New York and Connecticut, that's what they need. They need more businesses fleeing and taking jobs elsewhere. That's exactly what New York and Connecticut need right about now. And if this inhospitable climate comes from the federal government, well, then you'll start seeing companies just move production out of the United States to move overseas. But then when the feds enact uh, mandatory you know, uh, micro-printing uh, for guns imported into the U.S., then we're not there. This is two states. It's Connecticut and New York that are causing trouble right now. And then you look at micro-stamping and, and how easily defeatable it is. Again, you've got over 300 million weapons that are in existence in this country right now. micro does nothing. Zero. Those guns already exist. So you'd have people avoiding the purchase of certain weapons. If, if Colt and Remington were forced, the, the people wouldn't buy their weapons if they were micro in some cases. So we're talking about law-abiding law individuals that don't want Big Brother uh, you know, staring down their, uh, their faces and breathing down their necks. They buy all the brands. That's why Remington and Colt would be forced to move out of states that don't require or wouldn't require micro-stamping if the legislation comes to fruition. So it's not going to work on all the firearms that are out there. Uh, and then there's more why this thing is bogus. Uh, Hot Air did a, a great little piece on this thing. And uh, When did I see this? I saw this, uh, saw it over the weekend, and I think they might have published this on Saturday that micro-stamping does not work if shell casings aren't automatically ejected from the uh, from the weapon. Yeah, revolvers, derriers, double-barrel shotguns, pump shotguns, uh, rifles, uh, and semi-automatic firearms that can be equipped with uh, these inexpensive uh, 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 round catchers or, or the, the brass catchers. Man, I shoot ARs all the time, man. I, uh, I'll pump brass all over them, but you can get little catchers that'll catch, you know, catch the brass as it's ejected. It's not going to help there at the scene. So, and, and of course you have revolvers. That there's, there's no ejection. The brass remains in the cylinder. micro stamping does not work because firing pins are inexpensive and easy to replace. So a firing pin for most weapons easily replaced by someone with a minimum ability to read and follow basic cleaning directions for the firearm. So, you get a gun that is micro-imprinted on the firing pin, just take it out, get a new one. <laughs> get a $12, do $12 uh, Micro-stamping does not work because the stamping is easily defaced. It would just take a, a matter of a half dozen passes with a standard diamond file right on the firing pin to erase the micro-stamping right off the firing pin, and bam, you're back in business. Pull the trigger, it, 
fires a bullet, no micro stamping on the casing. I mean, this goes on and on. Oh, also, it's very fragile. So uh, there are some suggestions that after, uh, you know, a thousand rounds or, or whatever the number is, the micro stamping is just going to wear off on the weapons. It's just going to naturally wear. This is such a charade and such a ridiculous, oppressive move. That Connecticut and New York, it just sounds like they do follow through with the legislation. It sounds like they just want the gun companies out. But there go jobs. And all the ancillary and related uh, industries and, also, and, and the other businesses that, that uh, rely on these manufacturing facilities. It's just idiotic. Absolutely idiotic. And I, I've just given you all the examples of, of how this can be defeated. Oh, and it can be spoofed. It could be spoofed to waste police time, so you could have a fake micro-stamping created in a sophisticated organized crime operation or whatever, and you could leave bogus imprints all over the place and waste the cops' time. It's unbelievable. So a heads up in New York and Connecticut on the micro-stamping of firing pins. 800-801-8999 will hit the schnitt lies next. <laughs> Like I said, I don't usually listen to talk radio, but it's nice to be up to speed on the news every now and then and see what's going on. Proceed east on US 412. In one and a half miles, turn left to US 63. I got over the bridge and, you know, asked me for my bills and everything to see how much I weighed. Because I guess the bridge is damaged or something, so they're checking people's weights. Uh, so I'm actually going to be taking a detour up here, go up to 62 instead. Uh, I know I pick it up right right outside of Embody there, but I've never been that way before, so I think I'm going to stop this video here. And uh, when I get up here on this new stretch of road, I will uh, start the video again. All right, here we are, Embody, uh, Arkansas. It's a nice little town. I like it here. I come through here quite frequently, actually. Uh, like I said, I usually come up. Uh, <clears throat> I usually come up 63, 
but they have those bridge damage things and uh, some guys on the radio said there was a bunch of county mounties out there so I am probably double and then some what the weight limit is on those bridges so we're going around because I can't even imagine what the ticket would be for that uh, we're gonna hit 62 here and I almost missed it I was looking at the wrong GPS we're gonna hit 62 and that'll take us up into Pocahontas and from Pocahontas we can drop back down I think it's only uh, sorry uh, it's only about 10 extra miles so I think I can live with that and I've never been this way before I have ran over that bridge a couple of times uh, over the weight limit as I think everybody has from what the cop tells me anyway, he says, you know, they normally don't care or don't enforce it, but just because it's damaged right now, they're, uh, you know, being a little strict on it, so. We're going to head this way and see what we can see. This is all new to me out here. That looks like it'd be a really fun place to ride the dirt bike. <laughs> Yeah, if you haven't gotten that out of me, everywhere I go, I'm always looking for places to ride. Make sure this camera's even on. Yep. I see the light.
95 for diesel, I'll take it. That's another thing I was hearing on the news, man. Is I guess California's gas prices are that statewide average for regular fuel is like four dollars and sixty seven cents as of right now which is Monday October 8th 2012 I don't know I don't think I'm gonna be going out to California anytime soon because if regular fuel is for 67 a gallon I can't imagine what diesel is I you know I've gone through there a couple of times and it was, you know, 430 or so. So it's gone up. They said it's gone up 50 cents in the past week. So I imagine, like I said, you know, it's probably 480 to five dollars a gallon. I get an extra extra money. They pay me extra to go out on the west coast, but what they pay me ain't worth, you know, five dollars a gallon. <laughs> I have to bump my mileage pay up by about a dollar for me to consider. I don't like California anyway, except for Barstow. That's pretty nice out there. We go riding out there, that's why. So, But I can make Barstow and back in the tank of fuel from Las Vegas. So, unfortunately, you know, everything they send me out to California is like Los Angeles or down south there, like Ote Mesa or, you know, places down that way, so there's no way I make it in and out on one tank of fuel. business. Well, this 
will be in California. something quiet people don't mess with you I mean I'm home once or twice every six months so not like it really you know not like I'm there all the time making trouble but you know place to call my own be nice I think I gotta I gotta get my income tax check after I get that back I got some money that I loaned out to somebody. Once they pay that back to me, I'll have about four grand, so I think I should be able to find a place I like and start moving some stuff in. Just gotta find a place I like. <laughs> Oh, that's 
It's going to be the busiest Dollar General I've ever seen. shift to save my life today. Uh, this way will essentially run us right back into uh, on the other side of those bridges there. Hi buddy. good town, you know, quiet outskirts and there's a Walmart within a hundred miles. Life is good. Ah, she's doing a regen. No wonder my fuel mileage went to shit.
more miles until I'm back to where I would have normally been. It was a pretty nice little ride though. Found me another place I wouldn't mind living. <laughs> I still got a bunch of videos I got to upload. As soon as I get some internet, uh, I'll actually be at our terminal in Memphis tonight. So, I don't know. I really hate, like, Memphis is my home terminal, and I fucking hate that place. Uh, pardon my language, but I hate that. I hate it. I hate going in there. I hate seeing the people there. The only person that I care for is my dispatcher. Everybody else sucks. So I find myself hard pressed sometimes to go in to use their internet. But I'm antisocial too, so there's just so many people in there. It's very busy. It makes me uncomfortable. Anyway, uh, I'll try to get some more videos uploaded tonight. Uh, I figured out how to trick my phone so I can get internet again. Um, other than that, uh, until next time I make a video, you guys be safe, and we'll talk to you soon.